Good morning, congregation. It's always a blessing to be able to stand before the heavens and the congregation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. All things is open before his eyes. When he speaks to creation, to nature, nature responds instantly. When he speaks to the animal kingdom, as he appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and then when Jonah realized his situation, the fish, by the word of the Lord, spit him on dry land. How great is our Lord and God who give us life. But when he speaks to man, it seems to be a problem. Today, we have what's called global warming. I might want to hope that it's global warming that has caused me to have a sunroof, a ball spot. Just hope that that's the reason why. But as the Lord said in Isaiah, chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, he said, come, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But, always that but. If you refuse and rebel, you shall be eaten by the sword for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Today's lesson is the sovereignty of our Lord Savior over creation. In Psalms, chapter 65, verses 9 and 10, what was uh, read in your hearing this morning, says, you visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its pharaohs abundantly, settling its uh, ridges, softening it, with showers and blessing, it's growing. What will you say? Who do you think? Oh, we thank you, Mother Nature. Who would they say? But the fool thanks Mother Nature. The wise man knows that it is God that has visited the earth and watered it. No mother nature. It's the Lord, the God, our creator, Yahweh, Elohim. You see, let us look at some verses here to prove the point how the Lord, the God of hosts, is the one that is in control. In Psalms chapter 1, 47 verses 15 through 18. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down his crystals of ice like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and he melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. This 
is what the Lord does. Look at Job chapter 36, verses 24 through 29. Remember to extol his work, of which men have sung. All mankind has looked on it. Man beholds its form afar off. Behold, God is great, and we know him not. The number of his years is unsearchable, is unsearchable. For he draws up the drops of water, they distill his mist in the rain, which the skies pour down and drop on mankind abundantly. Can anyone understand the spreading of the clouds, the thundering of his pavilion? And in Job chapter 37, verses 5 and 6, God thunders wondrously with his voice. He does great things that we cannot understand. For to the snow, he says, fall on earth. Likewise, to the downpour, his mighty downpour. We are seeing the effects of the mighty downpour on the eastern region of this country, uh, Europe. Germany, at least 170 are reported dead in Germany and Belgium, and hundreds are still unaccounted for as the disaster count off uh, cut off communications. Many are asking why flood control efforts were so easily overwhelmed. You don't understand. You're dealing with a being that is in control of nature. When he sin forks his word, his word runs swiftly and nature responds to it like that. Okay. So rescue workers labored to deal with damage laid bare by receding water Sunday as the death toll from disastrous flooding in Western Europe rose about 160 and thoughts turn to the lengthy job of rebuilding communities devastated in minutes. That's how quick life can be wiped out. Lives, uh, structures, things of that nature damage so quickly. And in Job chapter 38 verses 25 through 28, he who has cleft a channel for the torrents of rain in a way for the thunderbolt. This is what we are dealing with right now, the, the torrential historic rainfall that is falling in the eastern part of this country and other parts of the world. And yet, we are over here dealing with something else, right? Which one would you want to deal with? The flood, the fire, and the heat, which one? Giving you an ultimatum. Really? Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 24 through 26. They do not say in their hearts, let us fear the Lord our God who gives the rain in its seasons. The autumn rain and the spring rain and keeps for us the weeks appointed for the harvest. Your iniquities have turned these away, and your sins have kept good from you. For wicked men are found among you, among my people. They lurk like fowlers, laying in wait. They set a trap, they catch men. It is the wickedness, iniquities that is causing havoc on this earth you can blame it on global warming you can blame it on whatever you want to blame it on but what we need to do is focus on who's in control and stop blaming it on global warming and in matthew chapter 5 verses 43 through 45 you have heard it said you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy but i say to you love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons 
of your father who is in heaven for he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust you see when we look back at the text scripture of psalms chapter 65 and verses 9 and 10 god's storehouse god's water is in the clouds you see this is what uh is referred to as the river of god see his river is in the clouds he opened up them clouds it's going to be an abundance of rain you see so all of this is given by a loving god to prepare the grain for us that we may be able to eat right the fruit for the harvest time this is what the lord does for us god sends the latter rains in the early spring to ensure that the vegetables will be luscious and the fruit juice but that has not been happening here of late you see and in psalms chapter 107 verses 8 and 9 let them thank the lord for his steadfast love for he has wondrous for his wondrous works to the children of men do we thank the lord for his wondrous works for he, for he satisfies the longing soul and the hungry soul he fills with good things. You see, we must recognize the goodness and the kindness of the Lord and also the severity of the Lord. A lot of times people just want to look at the good about the Lord, but you must understand that he is a, yes, a loving, kind God but he is a vengeful and wrathful and judging he will judge. And in his judgment, it's going to be horrific. Psalms chapter 107, verses 33 through 35. He turns rivers into a desert, springs of water into thirsty ground, a fruitful land into a salty waste because of the evil of its inhabitants we are experiencing uh uh districts in california that has been ravished by the drought to where they may not be able to live in those areas anymore because all the wells are running dry you see global warming we need to understand that we need to start praying to the Lord and thanking the Lord in verse 35 of 107. He turns a desert into pools of water, a porched land into springs of water. He can do all of this. This is what the psalmist embarks on in, in this, in praises of God's sovereignty when you read in psalms chapter 107 what god does jehovah can if it is his purpose to turn rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into dry ground we as the children of god need to pray concerning this situation we need to reach out to the lost and have them to acknowledge who is in control. You see, Jehovah has full control over nature and can take back his blessings should be, if it should be his desire or render them of no avail. This is what the Lord can do. A fruitful land into barrenness, for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. Should a nation not humble herself and pray and seek the face of the Lord, 
and turn from their wicked ways, then here, then her mountains, prairies, and oceans will become a land of barrenness. Jehovah will not withhold judgment from those who live wickedly before him. He must understand that. But should repentance come, he can just as easily turn. We know that God can turn and change his mind in an instant and wipe out the disaster that he had uh, focused on on a certain region or certain people in time gone by because of their repentance. We see that action taking place in the book of Jonah, how they repented and God relented of the disaster that he was about to inflict on Nineveh. The wilderness into a standing water and dry ground into water stream. The whole earth is at the mercy of the Lord God who brings judgment on wickedness. We must understand this in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. If my people who are called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. We today are the people of God, the congregation of the living God, which he purchased with his own blood. We must understand that. You see, our existence is based upon the consumption of water. You know, 60% of an adult, up to 60% of an adult's uh, body is uh, full of water, okay? According to biological chemistry, the brain and heart is composed of about 73% and the lungs at about 83% of water. With that in mind, Water is an essential part of our existence. We need it. Half of the United, the Midwest on this way is suffering from fires and uh, mega droughts. Lives are being impacted because of this. In Genesis chapter two and verse five, when no bush of the field was yet in the land and no small plant of the field had yet sprang up for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the land. You must understand who is in control here. To rain on the land. Why? Because there was no man to work the ground. You see rain and man go together. See the heavens were prepared and the earth were prepared for man. Everything has been made for us. We are the representatives of the eternal one. And this is what he expects of us. You see, the mega drought. More than half of the Western United States is in the grips of extreme or exceptional drought. Indi indicating widespread water shortages and major impacts on crops and pastures. Animals are being impacted from it in California, Arizona, and Utah. From the period between June 2020 and May 2021 of this year has been the driest seasons on record. As in the book of Job, chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. To you, O Lord, I call, for fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and flame has burned all the trees of the field. Even the beasts of the field pant for you because the water brooks are dried up, and fires have devoured the pastures of the wilderness. You have been paying attention to the news. You understand that California, the Western states, 
is in great trouble from a lack of rain. See, what are you going to do, California? What are you going to do, Arizona? What are you going to do, Utah? You going to keep blaming global warming? Or are you going to contact the one who sends the torrent rain? You see, Governor Gavin Newsom unveiled a $5.1 billion plan for California's water infrastructure, right? A drought response and uh, preparations for a climate resilient system. In addition to the proposed $5.1 billion funding, which will be spread out over four years, the plan includes $1 billion to help uh, Californians pay for their water bill. Water, water so bad. I had a guy come by and test my water. Water was so bad, I was scared to wash my face with it. Or brush my teeth. This is what I've been doing with this water. Lord, help us. You see the flooding on the East Coast. We must pray for these uh, people whose lives has been impacted because of the situation at hand. You see, in Amos chapter 4 and verses 6 through 8, I gave you cleanness of teeth in all your cities and lack of bread in all your places, yet you did not return to me, declares the Lord. I also withheld rain from you when there were yet three months to the harvest. I would send rain on one city and send no rain on another. One field would have rain and the field on which it did not rain would wither. So two or three cities would wander to another city to drink water and would not be satisfied, yet you did not return, declares the Lord. So we see on a larger scale that the Lord is sending rain on one part, torrential rain, and over here, we're dealing with fire and drought. We must understand who we're dealing with. It's not so much as global warming. It is the one who is in control of the warming of the globe. Understand that. It's when like Jonah decided that he didn't want to go and preach, but then he changed his mind and he went. So he decided to go and sit and watch what would become a city. And God caused a plant to grow up over him to protect him from the sun. And then God appointed a worm to come and eat that plant. You see? And then God appointed a scorching wind and the sun beat on Jonah head. This is the one we need to be paying attention to. This is the one we need to be paying attention to. So God does this to get our attention. You see, that's why he says, when I, when I withheld your reign, when I did all of these wonderful things for you, you still did not return to me. You see, God does things for a reason. In Romans chapter 2 and verse 4, or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that the kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? This is what people must understand. God has been so kind to me. Well, why don't you repent? and get baptized and be converted that your sins may be washed away that you may walk in the light. You see? That's how that works. So, Amos chapter 5 and verse 14 and 15, I'm closing up. So we say to the people of earth today, seek good and not evil that you may live 
And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you as you have said. Hate evil and love good and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. We are living in some times that has never been recorded in history. We got mega disasters, mega flooding, mega fires, mega drought, uh, mega disease that's killing people. People refuse to get their shots and even the ones with the shots still catching it, but less of an impact. We must understand that in Micah chapter six, verses six through eight, this is my closing statement. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offering? with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000s of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgressions, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Message, good. you know, God has set things up in our favor that we may have an opportunity to walk with him in that day. The water is ready, baptism, places you into Christ, stand in need of prayer, we will pray for you. And we should all be praying for the state of the globe, that God will heal the land for our sakes. Message of Lord.